Welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Always. Awesome. Today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, this new 3D printer that's got everybody buzzing, the Concepts 3D Systems Athena II. We found this really cool article about it in the 3D printing industry. Oh, yeah. I saw that one. Yeah. It just came out in December. Super recent. And this thing's got some features that are like straight out of the future. Yeah, it does. Like that whole Kickstarter thing with the original Athena was wild. Yeah. Funded in like half an hour. Crazy. It's insane. Under 30 minutes. That's what the article said. <laughs> so what's got everyone so excited about this new model? I mean, the 16K resolution is pretty mind blowing, right? Oh, yeah. 16K is a game changer for sure. Right. 14 by 19 micron pixels. That's incredible detail. Yeah, I can't even picture that, to be honest. What would you even need that level of detail for? I mean, just think about the medical field, like dental stuff, you know, yeah. crowns, bridges, all that. This level of detail could make them fit so much better. More comfortable for the patient, too. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. And I bet jewelers would love this thing, too. Oh, absolutely. Imagine the intricate designs they could create. It's crazy to think this one machine could impact so many industries. Now, the article also mentioned something called a smart dynamic control system. What is that exactly? Well, one of the biggest problems with 3D printing is consistency. Even expensive printers can have variations in quality. But the Athena II the uses sensors to monitor the print in real time. So it's like a self-driving car for 3D printing. That's a great way to put it. It's constantly adjusting to keep the quality top-notch. Wow. So no more failed prints. Well, it should reduce them significantly. That's a huge relief. I've wasted so much time and material on failed prints. Yeah. Tell me about it. But the Athena II is fast too, right? Yeah. The article says under five seconds per layer and overall speeds of like 40 to 100 millimeters per hour. So you get both speed and precision. Exactly. Best of both worlds. But let's talk about safety for a second. Resin printers can be kind of messy, right? And the fumes. Right. Yeah, you have to be careful with resin. But the Athena Satekin comes with the Aegis air filter system. What does that do? It monitors and filters those harmful VOCs. VOCs. Remind me what those are, Geth? Volatile organic compounds. They're released by the resin while it's printing. And breathing them in can be bad news. Gotcha. So this filter keeps the air clean. Yep. It's an important safety feature. Especially if you're working in a smaller space. Now, the article really geeks out about the Athena, the Sexon's connectivity and software. They mention Linux OS, Raspberry Pi, open source software. Oh, yeah. It's packed with techie goodness. But what does all that mean for the average user? Basically, it means it's incredibly user friendly. You can do pretty much everything right on the printer. Slicing, controlling, monitoring. So I wouldn't even need to connect it to a computer? Not necessarily, no. It's all very streamlined. That's amazing. But all this advanced technology must come with a hefty price tag, right? Well, the article doesn't give an exact price. They're probably trying to drum up excitement. I'm sure they are. But, but they do give us a timeline, right? Yeah, pre-orders start in January 2025. And they're saying shipping should start around late March or April. OK, so not too long to wait. So we've got a 3D printer with 16K resolution a self-adjusting system for perfect prints, top-notch safety features, and an incredibly user-friendly experience. They really seem to have thought of everything. It sounds like it. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. But what does this level of innovation mean for the future of 3D printing? How will it affect businesses, industries, even our daily lives? That's a big question, and one we'll be tackling in the next part of our deep dive. So stick around. We'll be right back after the break. So before we go off speculating about the future, we should probably take a closer look at all the tech that's making this Athena the Second so special. Right. There's a lot to unpack here. Like, um, did you see that part about the ultra high power Kabi LED with Fresnel for highly collimated light? Uh, honestly, that went right over my head. Yeah, it's a mouthful, but it's actually really important. OK, so in plain English, what does that even mean? Basically, it means the light that cures the resin is super powerful and precise. And the collimated light part means all the beams are parallel. So the resin cures evenly across the whole print bed. Ah, oh, that makes sense. So no more wonky layers or uneven surfaces. Exactly. It's all about precision, yeah. especially with those tiny pixels we were talking about. Right. Those 14 by 19 micron. Pixels. Yeah. It's like having a laser focus for your 3D prints. Nice. And what about that big touch screen? Is that just for looks or does it actually do something? Oh, no. That's your command center right there. You can do everything on the printer itself. Slicing, tweaking settings, calibrating. Really? No more messing around with the computer? Nope, it's all right there on the touchscreen. That's super convenient. Yeah, especially for professionals who need to work quickly. Definitely a time saver. Yeah. So what about the brains of the operation? What's powering all this fancy tech? 
Well, they're using a custom motherboard with Raspberry Pi hardware. Raspberry Pi? Isn't that like a little hobbyist computer? Yeah, but it's also super versatile and affordable. Plus, it's open source, so you could potentially upgrade it later. Wait, so this 3D printer is future-proof? To some extent, yeah. You could upgrade the components as technology advances. That's pretty cool. I noticed they also mentioned a ton of sensors, like a dozen or more. What are they all for? Well, each sensor has a specific job, and they all work together to make sure everything runs smoothly. You've got sensors for resin temperature, chamber temperature, UV LED temperature, humidity, VOCs, even a Z-axis force sensor, and a resin level sensor. Whoa, that's a lot of sensors. Yeah, but they're all there for a reason. Like the resin temperature sensor makes sure the resin is the right consistency. Not too thick, not too thin. Makes sense. And the Z-axis 4 sensor helps prevent layer shifting. And of course, the resin level sensor makes sure you don't run out of resin in the middle of a print. Right, that would be a nightmare. So basically, these sensors are working behind the scenes to prevent all those little 3D printing headaches. Exactly. They keep everything running smoothly and consistently. Awesome. Now, what about the software side of things? Well, it runs on a custom Nano DLP Linux OS, which is known for being very stable and reliable. Okay, but I'm not a programmer, so what does that mean for me? It means the software is less likely to crash or glitch. It's very stable and efficient, perfect for 3D printing. Gotcha. That makes sense. And they also mentioned something about Clipper firmware. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. It's open source and highly customizable. So if you're tech savvy, you can really tweak the printer to your liking. And for those of us who aren't tech savvy. It also means you get really precise control over the printer's movements and settings, which translates to better print quality and speed. Got it. So it's a win-win for everyone. What about connectivity? How do I get my designs onto the printer? You've got tons of options. Wi-Fi, gigabit Ethernet, Bluetooth, USB, pretty much anything you could ask for. So I could literally control this thing from my phone. Absolutely. You can monitor prints, pause them, cancel them, all remotely. Wow, they really did think of everything. It seems that way. Okay, before we move on, anything else we need to cover about the Athena the Second itself? Actually, there's one more thing. Remember how we said Formnext is a big deal in the 3D printing world? Yeah, the biggest. Well, the Athena the Second made its debut there last year. I didn't realize that. How did it go? Apparently, it was a huge hit. People were really impressed with its features and ease of use. So it's not just hype. It's actually living up to the expectations. It seems that way, yeah. That's great to hear. Okay, so to recap, we've got a 3D printer that's pushing the boundaries in terms of resolution, speed, and control. And it's doing all of that while being incredibly user-friendly and safe. It really does sound like they've thought of everything. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. But what does this mean for the future of 3D printing? That's the big question, right? It is. How will it affect industries, businesses, even our daily lives? That's what we're going to explore in the final part of our deep dive. All right, so we've spent a lot of time digging into the nuts and bolts of the Athena the Second, all its amazing features, the tech behind it. But now I want to talk about the bigger picture. What does this kind of innovation mean for the future? Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? And it's one that has me pretty excited. Okay, so you think this is more than just a cool new gadget? Oh, absolutely. The yeah. Athena the Second is a sign of where the whole 3D printing industry is headed. So you're saying it's not just about this one printer, but about a shift in the technology itself. Exactly. We've come a long way from those clunky, expensive 3D printers of the past. Right. Those were more like toys for hobbyists. Exactly. But now we're talking about high-resolution, professional-grade machines. Machines like the Athena Second that could change entire industries. Okay, let's get specific. Which industries are we talking about? Well, we already touched on the medical field. But the possibilities go way beyond just dental. Like Custom implants, for example. Imagine printing an implant that's perfectly tailored to a patient's anatomy. Or surgical guides that make complex procedures safer and more efficient. Wow, that's incredible. It's like science fiction becoming reality. It is. And then there's bioprinting. Actually printing tissues and organs using 3D printers. I've heard about that, but it seems so futuristic. It is, but it's happening. Yeah. And a machine like the Athena the Second could really accelerate that research. So we've got medicine covered. What about other industries? Manufacturing is another big one. Imagine being able to prototype and produce products on demand right in your own workshop. No more waiting for parts to be shipped from overseas. Right. That would be a game changer for small businesses. Absolutely. And then there's education. Giving students access to this kind of technology could spark a whole new wave of creativity and innovation. I love that idea. Putting the power to create in the hands of young people. Exactly. 
and who knows what they'll come up with. And what about the impact on our everyday lives? Well, as this technology becomes more affordable and user-friendly, it could become as common as owning a computer. Wait, you're saying we could all have 3D printers in our homes? It's not that far-fetched. Think about how quickly smartphones became ubiquitous. 3D printing could follow a similar trajectory. Okay, I see your point. But if we can print anything we need at home, what happens to traditional manufacturing and retail? That's a valid concern, yeah. and it's a conversation we need to be having. But ultimately, technology is a tool. It's up to us to decide how we use it. So what's the key takeaway for our listeners? I think the most important thing is to stay informed. Keep learning about the advancements in 3D printing and explore the possibilities. Don't be afraid to experiment and see where this technology can take you. Great advice. Well, this has been an amazing deep dive. Thanks for sharing your insights with us. My pleasure. It's always exciting to talk about the future. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of 3D printing. We hope you found it as fascinating as we did. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to invent the next big thing in 3D printing. Until next time, keep exploring, keep creating, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.